In this talk, we will learn about different features of gymnosperms, which are organisms that belong to the kingdom of plantae. All organisms that belong to the kingdom of plantae are multicellular and photoautotrophs. There are photoautotrophs because they have the ability to obtain energy from light that comes from the sun and make their own organic carbon compounds. Hence, they do not rely on other organisms for carbon sources. All organisms of kingdom plantae belong to the superfamily of Archeoplastida. This is different from fungi and animals, which belong to the supergroup of Opistoconta. In addition to plants, Archeoplastida includes the red and green algae, which are protists. All plants evolved from ancestral green algae. The first plants arose around 470 million years ago and were the non-vascular plants that were also called as bryophytes. These include the current day liverworts, mosses, and hornworts. Around 425 million years ago, vascular tissues evolved and gave rise to the seedless vascular plants, which include the lycophytes and monilophytes. Some examples of monilophytes are the current day ferns. Around 360 million years ago, seeds evolved in plants. All plants that produce seeds can be grouped into two clades, the gymnosperms and the angiosperms. The earliest plants were non-vascular plants, and they gave rise to the vascular plants, which evolved vascular tissues. The evolution of vascular tissues is a key innovation. The vascular tissues had the ability to transport water and nutrients to different parts of the plant. There are two main types of vascular tissues. Xylem transports water and minerals, while phloem transports nutrients from the leaves to different parts of the plant. Plants that have vascular tissues are called as tracheophytes. The evolution of vascular tissues is a key innovation because it allowed the plants to become bigger and more diverse. Thus, it supported the adaptive radiation of plants. It also aided in the evolution of plant organs, which are stems, roots, and leaves. The evolution of plant organs resulted in the sporophyte becoming larger and longer living than the gametophyte. Hence, the diploid sporophyte is the dominant generation in all vascular plants. All vascular plants possess true stems, leaves, and roots, and evolve modified leaves called as sporophylls. These sporophylls bear spores which arise due to meiosis. The spores, which are haploid, give rise to the gametophyte. It should be noted that the gametophyte has no vascular tissues and hence it is only the sporophyte that has vascular tissues. Vascular plants can be homosporous or heterosporous. Homosporous vascular plants are those that produce only one type of spore. That spore can develop into a gametophyte which is bisexual. A bisexual gametophyte is one that bears both types of gametangia. It can make the male gametangium called as the antheridium, as well as the female gametangium called as the archegonium. The antheridium and archegonium give rise to the male and female gametes respectively. Thus, the single gametophyte can make both male as well as female gametes. Homospory is observed in certain types of seedless vascular plants like lycophytes and monilophytes. Heterosporous vascular plants are those that produce two types of spores. The sporophyte makes two types of sporophylls. One of these sporophylls is the microsporophyll, which will form the microspore. The microspore will give rise to the male gametophyte, which will in turn make the male gamete. Another type of sporophyll is the megasporophyll. The megasporophyll will ultimately give rise to the megaspore, which will in turn give rise to the female gamete. 
Heterospory is observed in all gymnosperms and angiosperms, and some lycophytes and monilophytes. One similarity between seedless vascular plants and non-vascular plants is that the embryo is formed within the gametophyte. Over time, plants evolve a protective covering around this diploid multicellular embryo. This allowed the embryo to form a sporophyte outside the gametophyte. The multicellular embryo with the protective covering and nutritional stores is called as a seed. Seeds are similar to spores that are observed in non-vascular plants as well as seedless vascular plants and that they both can withstand harsh conditions. However, since the seed has a diploid embryo, it is more resistant to mutations than spores are, which are haploid. The seed is able to protect the embryo because of the seed coat, which envelops the embryo. The embryo has an inbuilt food supply in the seed and can remain dormant for many years and hence wait for favorable conditions. One big advantage of seeds is that they can be transported to long distances by different media. These include wind as well as animals. Thus, the embryo can be dispersed to many different locations farther away from the parent plant. Seed-bearing vascular plants are also called as spermatophytes. All spermatophytes belong to two clades. The first clade is the gymnosperms, which evolved first. They dominated the terrestrial ecosystems during the Mesozoic era. One feature of gymnosperms is that they do not make any fruits or flowers, but they do make seeds. The second clade are the angiosperms, which dominate most terrestrial ecosystems right now. They are flowering plants, and the plants produce a fleshy covering that surrounds the seed, which we call as fruit. In all seed-bearing vascular plants, the sporophyte is the dominant generation. All of these plants produce seeds, which represents a dispersible stage in their life cycle. Seed-bearing vascular plants also show a miniaturization of the gametophyte. Let us take an example of a pine tree, where the tree is the sporophyte. It makes two types of spores, and one of them will give rise to the male gametophyte, which is represented by the pollen grain, which we can all agree is very small. The other gametophyte, which is the female gametophyte, is formed in the ovule, which is present inside the pine cone. Again, we can agree that it is very small. Thus, this is what we mean when we say miniaturization of the gametophyte. They are much, much smaller than the sporophyte. Another common feature among seed-bearing vascular plants is that the haploid gametophyte is formed within the sporophyte. The sperm is transferred to the ovule through pollen grains, and hence there is an easy way where the plant does not rely on water but can rely on other mechanisms like wind to allow the sperm to find the ovule. Gymnosperms are seed-bearing vascular plants that produce naked seeds. The seeds are considered naked because there is no fleshy covering that surrounds the seeds, and hence gymnosperms do not make fruits. All gymnosperms can be classified into four phyla. These include phylum cycadophyta, which includes different types of cycads that look like palm trees, phylum netophyta, Phylum Ginkophyta, which has only one living species, which is the Ginkgo biloba tree, and Phylum Coniferophyta. Phylum Coniferophyta is the most diverse phylum and includes many different types of species, including redwood trees and sequoia trees. All gymnosperms are heterosporous, and hence they have two types of sporophylls. Most sporophylls form cone-like structures. The microsporophylls are also called as the male or the pollen cones. 
The megasporophyll is the female cone and is also called as the ovulate cone. The formation of microspores from microsporophylls is a multi-step process. The first step involves the production of structures called as microsporangia, which are diploid structures. In each microsporangium, there are microspore mother cells, which are also called as microsporocytes. Each microspore mother cell, which is diploid, will undergo meiosis to give rise to four haploid microspores. These haploid microspores will develop to form pollen grains. Thus, four haploid microspores will give rise to four pollen grains. The pollen grains represent the male gametophyte of the plant. Now, each microspore or pollen grain will form a wall around itself. The outer wall is called as an exine, while the inner wall is an intine. In some gymnosperms, the exine can form wing-like structures, and this helps with the dispersal of the pollen grains by wind. Similar to non-vascular and seedless vascular plants, the male gamete of gymnosperms has to find the female gamete, which is usually present in the ovule. The transfer of pollen, which harbors the male gamete, to the ovule of the plant is called as pollination. Pollen grains can be dispersed by wind and hence the male gametes do not have to swim in water to find the female gamete. The pollen grain does not have the male gamete at the beginning and hence it has to go through some changes in order to form the male gamete. During the dispersal state, it is in the form of a single haploid cell, which then undergoes mitosis to give rise to two cells, which is the prothallus cell and the antheridial cell. The prothallus cell goes through more rounds of mitosis to ultimately give rise to two male gametes, which are called as sperm. The female gametes are made in the megasporophylls of the plant. The megasporophyll is also called as the ovulate cone. Within each megasporophyll are many megasporangia. Each megasporangium, which is diploid, is protected by a layer of integument. Within the megasporangium, a megaspore will be formed, and this megaspore will then give rise to the female gamete. A collection of the megaspore, megasporangium, and integument forms the ovule. Within the ovule, megaspores arise from megaspore mother cells, which are also called as megasporocyte. These are diploid cells, and each megaspore mother cell will undergo meiosis to form four haploid cells. The upper three cells degenerate, and only one persists. The one that survives is the megaspore. The megaspore undergoes cell division to form the female gametophyte, which is called as the endosperm. Some cells within the endosperm will undergo changes to form the archegonia. In some cases, the ovule can have anywhere from two to eight archegonia. Within each archegonium, a female gamete will be present. Thus, the archegonia and endosperm comprise the female gametophyte of gymnosperms. To summarize the formation of the female gamete, we begin with a megasporangium that is present in the megasporophyll, which is also called as the ovulate cone. Within the megasporangium is a diploid megaspore mother cell, which will undergo meiosis to give rise to four haploid cells. Three of the cells will die and only one will persist. This megaspore will undergo mitosis to form the female gametophyte or the megagametophyte. Some cells within this female gametophyte will undergo changes to form archegonia. Within each ovule, we can have anywhere from two to eight archegonia, and in each archegonium, there will be one egg cell, which is haploid. In order for fertilization to happen, there is a secretion of a liquid drop called as a mucilaginous drop, 
in the space where the integuments do not meet. This space is called as the micropile. This liquid is sticky and hence pollen grains that are dispersed by the wind get caught in this sticky fluid at the micropile that is present in each ovule. Once it is stuck in the micropile, the pollen grain can start contacting the ovule and it undergoes germination. This involves the formation of a pollen tube. Within this pollen tube are two male gametes. One of the male gametes will fertilize one egg that is present in an archegonia. We can have multiple sperm try to fertilize different archegonia, but of all of those, only one will persist because there isn't much space for many embryos to form. After fertilization, a diploid zygote will be formed and that diploid zygote will undergo mitosis to form a young embryo. As the embryo develops, the integuments will surround that embryo to form a seed coat and thus a seed will be formed. Let us summarize the life cycle of gymnosperms using a pine tree as an example. All gymnosperms are vascular plants where the sporophyte is the dominant generation. Within each gymnosperm are modified leaves that can give rise to sporophylls. The microsporophyll, also called as the pollen cone, is the sporophyll that will ultimately give rise to the male gamete. Within the pollen cones are microsporangia, and within the microsporangia, are microsporocytes or microspore mother cells. They undergo meiosis to give rise to microspores which will develop to form the pollen grains. The pollen grains are the male gametophyte and will ultimately give rise to male gametes. Within the plant we also have ovulate cones which are the megasporophylls. Within the megasporophylls we have megasporangia and within the megasporangia are megasporocytes or megaspore mother cells. A combination of the megasporangia, the megaspore, and integuments is the ovule, and thus within the ovule, the female gametes will be formed. The megasporocytes will undergo meiosis and ultimately give rise to archegonia, and within each archegonia will be a haploid egg nucleus or egg cell, which is the female gamete. The microspores or pollen grains will be deposited on the micropile and they undergo germination to form a pollen tube. The pollen tube will ultimately reach the archegonium and the male gamete will fuse with the egg. The zygote that is formed is diploid and will undergo mitosis to form an embryo. This embryo is diploid and the integuments surrounding the embryo will form a seed coat, thereby giving rise to a seed that has the embryo as well as nutritional reserves for the embryo. When the conditions are right, these seeds will germinate to give rise to a seedling which will ultimately mature to form the sporophyte which will give rise to the appropriate sporophylls to repeat the cycle again. With this, we come to the end of our talk where we learned about the general characteristics of vascular plants and plants that produce seeds. We also learned about the general characteristics of gymnosperms and how gametes are formed in gymnosperms. We then learned about the fertilization process and seed formation in gymnosperms.